Hello again. I'm going to look through some of the readings um, on uh, compulsion and freedom. Aristotle is really the one who, who framed the debate uh, saying that actions are involuntary and therefore we're not really responsible. Uh, if they're done under compulsion, somebody forces us, or through ignorance, um, we don't know what we're doing. Uh, like a small child, really. Um, things that are done under compulsion or out of ignorance, he argues, are not voluntary. But that really is going to lead to a whole host of challenges uh, and questions. Um, not only in terms of mental illness, but in terms of of ignorance and uh, in, in in some cases enforced ignorance. Um, Judith Orr's argument about sex ignorance and freedom, for example, uh, in earlier generations, uh, and, and to some extent even today, there there are attempts on the part of people in positions of authority to to limit people's knowledge. Um, Um, of sex, human sexuality um, in particular. Uh, I, I remember when my mom was in high school, there was a, a girl in her class who, who got married while she was still in high school. And um, there, there was an attempt made to not allow her to go to school for fear she would get uh, all of the other girls interested in sex. Uh, and a lot of the, um, a lot of, as your textbook, um, is going to talk about, um, you know, a lot of, of the, um, a lot of states don't allow uh, sex ed classes to deal with um, contraceptives uh, because it, it's abstinence only. We don't want them to know about such things. Um, you know how 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 much of that becomes then brainwashing. Um, And the behaviorists, um, including people like John Hospers, uh, argue that, um, you know, we're not really responsible for our actions um, because actions grow out of our character. Uh, and that's which is shaped by factors. that we we cannot control uh, Hospers concludes by saying that if we can overcome the effects of early environment the ability to do that is itself a product of that environment the way we're brought up and we didn't give ourselves that ability so we we can't take credit for having it and we can't blame somebody who doesn't and and so what what this argument really winds up doing is it does away with the whole concept of responsibility. Um, that, you know, some of us are able to discipline ourselves and, um, and focus, uh, and we blame those who can't, um, but it's because of the way that we were brought up and the way that they were brought up, uh, behaviorally conditioned, as it will. Um, that's why I gave you the same videos on behaviorism I gave you in the earlier lesson, because they're relevant here as well to this, this form of um, saying, in fact, that our 
our behavior is conditioned, shaped by forces beyond our control. Uh, and people like B.F. Skinner argue that that's the way it always is. At least what we should do is have, uh, have that conditioning done by people who know what they're doing. so that it's well done rather than haphazardly done as it is when it's done by amateurs like the rest of us. I don't know about you, but I find that a very frightening uh, concept, uh, even though, of course, we all um, are to some extent, programmed to act in certain ways. Uh, I, am, I am reluctant to give anybody too much control. I think that's dangerous. Um, and yeah, that for me is rooted in the concept of original sin, um, that nobody is... Um, Nobody is beyond suspicion. In fact, that is part of the structure of American government with the famous set of checks and balances that you learned about in your um, civics classes in high school where the legislative, the executive, the judicial all put limits on the powers that each that the other branches have. Um, that's, in fact, rooted in... John Calvin, and the idea that no one is exempt from sin, and therefore anyone who has complete power will inevitably abuse it. Um, that is that is my fear with what um, what Skinner advocates in terms of behavioral engineering. Um, that it's dangerous. And that's why um, novels like 1984 and Brave New World and A Clockwork Orange um, view this as um, not utopian, but dystopian. Um, a, a, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a horror movie. Uh, to give that kind of power to anyone. Um, you know, I, I want to, to argue that while I may, you know, I may have been brought up in certain ways, I in fact have the ability to override that if I want to enough. Uh, and in fact, I did not raise my children uh, precisely the same way that my parents raised me. Uh, when I, you know, by the time I was about 20 or so, I had already identified some things that I thought that my parents had done right <laughs> and some things that, that I think thought they had done wrong and that I wanted to do differently uh, when I had children. Um, and it seems to me that we, that we have that ability if we choose to use it. Now, some people may not choose to use it. But nonetheless, that's, you know, that's what, why people like me are scared of people like B.F. Skinner. Okay. Um, the article by Catherine McKinnon... Uh, essentially uh, argues that, that girls are brought up um, in a, a, a system that objectifies them, that defines their, their worth, their value uh, in terms of their sex appeal. Uh, and that um, 
the 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 media, um, particularly um, pornography, but but even uh, like movies and TV uh, commercials, basically turn women into a commodity uh, based on their body. Um, things like Barbie doll um, work into this um, objectification of women, which is, of course, related to their subjugation to men uh, and uh, turns women into objects and only men are subjects. Um, I've given you uh, other videos with Kant, but I'm going to give you my thumbnail sketch. Uh, and, and and that is that um, for Kant, um, our our ability to understand the world demands that we think in terms of cause and effect. Uh, Kant freely concedes um, to the empiricists that we never actually observe that 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 it, that's part of the knowledge that is supplied by our brain as we interpret our, our expenses back to our discussion on epistemology. You see, it all does re really relate. But on the other hand, we, we ha reason demands that we postulate uh, freedom uh, in order that we can think and act morally. Um, he perceives, I think quite correctly, that the whole idea of moral conduct demands that we assume that we choose our actions. Um, the whole concept of moral responsibility demands that choice. And so basically he argues that when we're looking at things in an objective way to try to understand, we have to think in terms of determinism. But when we switch to our role as a person who has to make decisions and act, uh, at that point we have to think in terms of freedom. And so he, he's... Um, he's essentially trying to do a both and. to hold on to determinism and to freedom, um, but um, not so much in terms of, of actual fact, but in terms of this is the way we have to think in order to, on the one hand, understand the world, and on the other hand, in order to live in the world and act in the world. For Sartre, freedom carries with it responsibility. Remember, existentialists uh, believe in radical freedom. Um, and essentially what he says in the article that you have in your book is that every time I make a decision about how, how to act, I am making a statement that this is the way that everyone should um, should behave, should conduct themselves. Um, and so we are, in a sense, making the world, not just ourselves. Community events are simply events that we cho choose in groups. Um,
And so I, I choose not only for myself, but for everyone when we, when we make our free choices. Han, in the article turning on the television, um, points out that we actually choose, to some extent, the, the way we are programmed um, in terms of, of our what we choose to watch, uh, what we choose to read. Uh, you know, we choose those channels. Uh, and so, in effect, we program ourselves. Uh, I think that's becoming increasingly obvious in 21st century America with our political pro, uh, polarizations. People choose what, uh, what they listen to, um, and they listen to what reinforces their own beliefs. That's why we have alternative facts now. Um, that we, we, we choose our thoughts. And so we shape our own minds by what we choose to attend to. See you next time.